Danny Kahneman makes the distinction between system one and system two. And I think it's worth spelling out a little bit exactly kind of the character of those two systems. So system one is, as I said, it was, it's fast, it's uh, automatic, and it's completely effortless. You don't even know you're doing it. And so a few of those examples include, uh, for example, you might see a face, an angry face. And so if you look at a photo and you see the angry face, then you don't have to kind of um, build it up. You don't have to recognize a oh, well, snarling uh, face, kind of frowny wrinkles on the forehead, uh, showing teeth, right? None of these things have to happen in order for you to recognize that it's an angry face. It just happens. Um, another example is uh, two plus two equals, right? You don't need, four just pops into your head or bread and butter, hopefully, pops into your head. Um, and again, I mean, so kind of the, the nature of this processing means that it's, it just happens to you. Another example that we revisited in, in episode two was uh, this idea of illusions. And again, you can't help but to see these illusions. Uh, we gave the example of the faces appearing on the side of the screen. You can't help but to see the faces appear alien-like. This is a really nice example. Uh, it's by Edward Adelson, and it's called the checker shadow illusion. And you see two squares marked A and B. And when you're looking at the squares, you can't help but to see one square being darker than the other, right? They, they look like they're completely different, but in fact, they're exactly the same shade of gray. So if you were to actually measure, and we encourage people to kind of do some arts and crafts here, and you can see, in fact, that the two squares are in fact identical, but you can't help but to see them as completely different, right? So this is system one. So you can't help, these things actually happen to you. You're not doing anything to see these illusions. And I think that's really worth pointing out. And, um, as we talked about in episode two, people have this conception when it comes to higher order properties like learning and memory that we have some sort of introspective access, that, we're, that we have some uh, control over these sorts of things. But in fact, as Nisbet said, we actually don't. So that's, that's kind of system one. These are the things that happen to you. It's effortless, it's automatic. But system two is the opposite. And so instead of two plus two, uh, we have something like, I don't know, 17 times 24. Yeah, doesn't exactly come roll off the tongue, right? Like, it, like two plus two does. So you actually, you could compute it, you could sit down, you could probably even do it in your head if you had a bit of time, but it doesn't immediately jump out at you. And another one might be, uh, so a system one property might be recognizing a familiar face. So you can recognize your friend immediately and you can recognize, um, Someone that you, your mother, for example, in a crowd even, you could, she would just kind of pop out. But when you're searching for a friend, for example, in a crowded auditorium, right, and you're trying to find out who it is, it's the serial process, you have to do one thing, no, not them, not them, and you kind of go through um, this type of long, effortful process in order to spot that person. So that's kind of the distinction between system one and two. Another one, which I find quite interesting, is driving, and so, I've been living in Australia for the last 10 years or so. I have absolutely no problem driving on the left side of the road. Um, it's completely effortless. It's largely system one, particularly in, on, on an open road. You just, there's no processing whatsoever. You can almost forget how much you've actually traveled. But when I go back to Canada, um, where I grew up, and drive on the other side of the road, it is really effortful. I have to sit and remind, okay, drive on the right, drive on the right, drive on the right. Indicators on this side, not the, the window wipers go off every once in a while, and it, it's not easy. This freaks me out, actually. So we recently, uh, we recently went to New York to have a chat with Danny Kahneman, and of course, you're driving on the right side of the road, and I'm in the passenger seat. And we're driving through the streets of New York, which is hard at the best of times, but then, you're talking to me about quite complicated, you know, scientific uh, processes and principles, and I can, I can tell that that your mind is not necessarily on the road, but it, but it's thinking about these things. That's another facet of of system two kind of thinking, actually. So the uh, system two is is slow and deliberate, deliberate, but it the the resources are limited. So when you're trying to do two complex tasks, which is driving on the other side of the road that you're used to and explain a complex phenomenon to me, those two interfere with each other. So I think 
Next time we're in the US, uh, you, should, you should keep focused on the road, but maybe we're in Australia when you're, you know, system one is you know, taking control of the wheel, then we could have a chat about more, more, more complicated things. And you'd like to think that we'd be immune to these sorts of effects. And we talked about this uh, previously, I think in episode two, where uh, we aren't any better than anyone else at making these sorts of uh, errors, right? So hopefully I had somebody, you know, in the back, in the, si in the seat next to me where that would say either shut up or pull over and we can carry on the discussion. But hopefully, I mean, this distinction between system one and two I think is quite important. Now everybody should have completed the uh, three questions that we had earlier in the episode. Now, these are part of something called the cognitive reflection task. Do you want to tell us a bit about the test? Sure, it was developed by a researcher at Yale called uh, Shane Frederick. And it's kind of like a three question IQ test, uh, but it's a little bit different. It, it assesses your ability to suppress a, a kind of quick system one response and uh, your ability to, uh, to rely on the slower deliberate system two response. So here's an example. A bat and a ball cost a dollar and ten cents. The bat costs one dollar more than the ball. How much does a ball cost? Now, when I first heard this example, my, my internal monologue was just screaming, ten cents, ten cents, ten cents. But hold on a minute. If the ball costs ten cents and the bat costs one dollar more than the ball, that means the bat costs a dollar ten and the ball costs ten cents, which adds up to a dollar twenty, which doesn't make sense, right? It has to add to a dollar ten. So if you spend a little bit of time thinking about this, you realize that the bat has to cost a dollar and five cents and the ball five cents. That's the only way that these two things can add up to a dollar ten. So as I said, it, you, you've got to, in order to get this question right, you've got to really suppress that, that initial response and think a little bit more uh, about it. And so it's the same thing with the other two questions on the, on the, on the cognitive reflection test. So I think the second one is, uh, if it takes five machines, five minutes to make five widgets, how, much, how long does it take for 100 machines to create 100 widgets? And immediately the intuitive sort of response is 100, 100 minutes, yeah. right? But in fact, that's not correct. The third question, uh, is, about question uh, is a question about lily pads on a lake that keep doubling in size each day. And if it covers the entire lake after 48 days, how many days does it, or how long does it take to cover half of the lake? The first thing that comes to your mind is half of 48, which is 24, which also isn't correct. So it would be great if people could kind of go back to those questions and figure out, use their system too, and figure out exactly what the correct response is to, uh, to these questions. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not easy, and it's, it takes a little bit of cognitive effort to stop and kind of move on. But I hope people don't feel bad by, uh, if they didn't get each of the three questions correct. In fact, that's extremely rare, as Shane Frederick showed. In fact, they compared people across a whole bunch of institutions from Harvard and MIT and other institutions uh, that aren't in part of the Ivy League and so on. Um, and a lot of people didn't get it correct. So they shouldn't feel bad if they didn't get all three correct, but it does seem to measure people's uh, degree of rationality, if you call it. I think Keith Stanovich from Toronto talks about um, this difference between intelligence and rationality. And rationality is kind of what we mean by system two processing, the extent to which people put in the effort to process um, the information a bit more carefully. But um, I think it's worth keeping in mind, again, the point of this exercise is to recognize the distinction between system one and system two. And obviously the, the grandfather of, of heuristics and biases and the originator of this distinction between system one and two is, is Danny Kahneman. Now, we had a conversation with uh, Danny in New York and he really made that distinction between um, the two systems.